by Fujifilm. <laughs> because in, in early days, uh, when we used to get only Kodak films, mainly Kodak Tri-X was my favorite, and then Ektachrome and Kodachrome. And Kodachrome was very fine grain and very super speciality kind of color quality. So we used to love it. But expensive and difficult to get into India because of import restrictions. Then comes Fuji Films. And Fuji film Velvia was a delicious, delightful film, cheaper than them, available and accessible. And then Velvia and Provia I used to use. Provia 100 normally and sometimes 400. Anyway, that was one part. But then uh, I had another part of my life as a photographer it was very important when I Somebody from Chandni Chowk, the camera's shops, he rang me up, he said, Sir, I have got a very special camera for you. I said, which one? He said, no, sir, I'll come and give it to you. I said, please come. So he comes with a wide lux camera, 35 millimeter panorama. Boom. So I click the shutter and go. it goes like this. I said, very nice. Now, you see, they say, to capture a moment in space. And that's what matters. And this is what the Western master said. Capturing a moment in space. But India is an overcrowded horizontal experience. So there is no a moment in space. There are several moments throbbing in any given space. So I wanted to open up my vision, my canvas bigger than a moment in space. So I was using this wide lux and suddenly I got to know that Fujifilm in collaboration with Hasselblad has created a perfect panoramic camera that was x -Pen. And I got that camera x -Pen, and it was so amazing. I, I think so far it's been the most precise and perfect camera for a professional. Unlike today, that every camera has hundreds of modes and hundreds of things happening and it becomes complicated, it becomes heavy and expensive. So this x -Pen camera had this manual focus, shutter speed aperture and auto winding, just four features and as big as any 35 millimeter camera of those days. So I went crazy using that. So, you know, when I had my big exhibition in France, they gave me a big retrospective at Al Festival. So I had lots of panoramas taken with x -Pen. And they asked me, why are you so fascinated by this? I told them, this is what India means to me, not a moment, several moments. So that was the thing. And then I had a big show in a museum in Tokyo where they were getting the prints done with the Fuji film labs. And they invited me especially to come to Tokyo and go to the lab to get my prints done. And they were doing a great job of it. And then there they presented me another expand with three lenses. And I was delighted. And now you guys, it's not DX, it's not full frame. It's a medium format camera, GFX 100S, 102 megapixels, as big, as light, and as quick or even quicker than most other professional cameras. So that's my delight these days. Two photographers in the world who've done maximum number of books. One is uh, our Magnum photographer, and the other guy is me. I've done more than 50 books on different themes of India. Now, way back in 1970, when I was with the Statesman newspaper, my first job, our editor used to be Desmond Doig, very creative person. He said, Raghu, I have met a great lady in Calcutta, you must come and photograph her. 
so I went to Calcutta and he introduced me to Mother Teresa. And Mother Teresa was very little known at that time. And I met her and I was so impressed by her dedication, her, the way she did seva, looking after the poorest of the poor, and her prayers had so much magic in them. So I said, Desmond, she's an unbelievable lady, we should do a book. She says, yes, we will do a book. That was my first attempt in doing the book. And then I was simultaneously, because I was in, parked in Delhi since 1964 or 5. So I was photographing Delhi. And that was another book I was working on, a book on Delhi. So, you know, we did this book on Mother Teresa with Desmond Doig's text. And then I did uh, a book on Delhi with Oxford University Press. And that was the beginning of my magic with the books. Now, you see, <clears throat> even when I was, I think probably National Geographic is the only magazine in the world where you shoot for them for six weeks, eight weeks, three months, and then they invite you to, uh, to Washington to come and edit your work with the editors. So that was very satisfying, you know, when I was shooting with them. But otherwise, most of the magazines, you send them your unprocessed film, they process, they do their own edit, and you got no control over it. And even when I was a picture editor with India Today, I had all the controls of editing my own work, and we used to do 12-page, 14-page essay, like on Satyajit Ray, on Mother Teresa, on great masters of Indian classical music, like that. So it used to be a lot of fun, but 12 pages, 14 pages at the most. The book is like making a film on a subject. And if you are the editor yourself, then you know your journey, your understanding of the subject matter, and it is the most fulfilling experience of doing photo books, picture books. And in my case now, you see, it's more than 50 years in photography. And early years, late 60s, 70s, and even 80s, I was shooting a lot of black and white and some color. And today I'm shooting you know, you shoot in color, convert it into black and white if you want. So even when I do a book on Sethirupati or on any other subject, I have got range of work taken over the years, 50 years of work I edit. And that world looks so different. My third book on Delhi has something so amazing that, you know, like Hamayu's tomb. In uh, 19 late 60s, there were wheat fields in the backside of the railway track and the Hamanyu's tomb standing out. So the whole landscape was different. And if you go back, you cannot, uh, if you go back to the ring road from where you can see a bit of a dome of the monument, you see no, nothing else in the foreground. So it is, everything has changed. You know, you see the important part of photography is the fact that when we do the sensitive documentation kind of photography, hmm, we are literally capturing the photo history of who we are. And when I look back at those pictures taken in Delhi 50 years ago, it was another era, it was another world which doesn't exist in Delhi. So this is the photo history of the city that I have lived in. So this purpose is very precious. So when you are doing a book on any subject, the range, the perspective you can create is so amazing that you know pictures taken 40, 50 years ago, they have their own archival quality about them. And when I shoot today, even the same situations, I mean, it's how things have changed so drastically. Mostly, sometimes, interestingly enough, and many times very chaotic. But the purpose of art is to capture the spirit of things as they are, whether they're chaotic situations or they're poetic situations. So book, making a book gives me the greatest satisfaction and fulfillment as an individual, as a photographer, as a sensitive person.
you know, with GFX 100S, which is 102 megapixels and brilliant quality. So I'm planning to do a book on Ajanta Alora. I have photographed Ajanta Alora, but now I'll go back and, and, and like Alora, Alora are the rock temples carved out of single rocks. They are not carved sculptures brought there. They are part of the rocks. And the magic of that place and the details of the sculptures. And when I wait for the good light to happen, it, it's going to be so beautiful with this medium format, 100 megapixel, that I want to bring out those textures, those details, those lightings, and people going about here and there and capturing them in the process, their interest, their eyes popping out looking at these sculptures. Similarly, Ajanta has some magnificent paintings, wall paintings of so many centuries ago. And the, some of the color quality is also amazing. So with this new camera, I want to bring out that color quality. Ajanta will be in color and Alora will be in black and white because there the stones have become almost dark. So the color doesn't mean much over there, but in black and white, the textures the tones, the quality, the contrast will be, is going to be amazing. I am absolutely waiting for this project to happen for me and I'm sure you guys will love it. I must say that from the very beginning, you know, I have always preferred to use lightweight cameras, lightweight lenses that gives you a kind of mobility and quickness because I am a daily life, you know, photographer shooting in the streets or even when I am do doing big projects in specific given places. I like to be quick and things to be handy. So I have always preferred to use those cameras which are lightweight and smaller. And here we've got a medium format camera hmm, which is as big as any other 35 millimeter full frame, even slightly smaller I'll say. And what is so great about it is that it's very handy, it's efficient, it's very quick to use. And above all, I have seen just in my two fingers, I have the, all the controls. I have to hold the camera and just these two fingers do the magic from, from uh, ISO to color quality to focus to anything that I want to do. It's in my two fingers. It's very efficient camera and that's what makes a lot of difference.